Hey everybody, this is Tyson with HHO for Life. Um, I just had an aha moment that I want to share with you guys regarding Stanley Mayer's water fuel injector. So I think it's something that you guys should definitely consider because um, I really do believe that this is how it works. Um, <clears throat> maybe some of my things, you know, my theories might, might not be 100% correct, but I, I believe they're pretty close to being there. Um, please guys, comment, subscribe, all that kind of good stuff. Um, and let me know what you guys think about this. I'm just going to show you a couple of his pictures first. These come out of his book, The Birth of a New Technology, in section 7. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about a couple of them. And my aha moment. This is one of his most common voltage intensifier circuit, uh, voltage intensifier circuit diagrams. Um, right here. That's showing how the uh, the water molecule is pulled apart <clears throat> and fractioned into hydrogen and oxygen. This right here is a ramping wave effect. Um, this is one important thing that I wanted to show you guys. This wasn't part of my whole moment, but um, some, I think it's something important to point out. Um, what you see is you, you have a square wave happening here. And within each pulse uh, of that square wave, you have a, a voltage <coughs> and a resonance ramping effect. Yes, I did say voltage and resonant ramping effect. It's both. It's not just one or the other. What happens is you start out at a lower voltage amplitude during the pulse and a lower volt and a lower resonance point, and it ramps up to a higher voltage and a higher resonance point to where it peaks out at the top, um, to where you'll have. Um, a, a high amount of gas production, and what happens during the stepping stage is <clears throat> each stepping, each ramping effect, each stage, the uh, the bond of the water molecule is uh, decreased until the water molecule is pulled out, pulled apart, and um, hydrogen and oxygen gases are then um, released, since there is no longer a bond between the molecules. Um, so it is a voltage and a resonance ramping effect, not just one or the other. Um, <coughs> this is, <coughs> excuse me, a different diagram of a circuitry. Um, this is called his matrix circuit. I don't really see a whole lot of people using that that one, <coughs> and I think it should be experimented with a little bit more. Excuse me, guys. Sorry. <coughs> And these <clears throat> are some pictures of his injector nozzles, like the, the ends of his injectors. And this one of his secondary coils, I'll get onto that in a minute. But, <clears throat> excuse me, my aha moment. So there's one of two ways that this came about. <clears throat> First, is quite a while ago, I saw a video of a guy, I guess I can... Look at you guys while I'm talking a little bit. Even though you might not want to see my face. Just so you know, I'm cross-eyed. It's because I was born uh, with uh, about eight different eye conditions, so I've had it fixed for the most part. Um, but if they straighten them too much, <laughs> I'd see double. Um, and no, I don't see double right now. But anyway, <clears throat> so what happened is I, uh, oh wow, what was it five months ago or so? I came across a video of a guy that got a, a microwave transformer, and then what he did is he created a high voltage arc um, across a spark gap. And then he got a steam, um, uh, a, a device that creates steam, he, and he sprayed the steam into that high voltage spark gap, um, and it burned the water. Well, what really happened, um, some people get this confused, it didn't burn the water, you can't burn water. You can, however, burn the hydrogen and oxygen gases that come off the water. What happens is when you spray that steam into that high voltage arc, it instantaneously uh, fractures the water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen gases, and those are then burned. So it's the hydrogen and oxygen gases that are burned, not the water itself. Um, so that's something important to know. So there was that thought, um, high voltage being the key. Then there was another one. I got looking 
uh, some drawings <clears throat> of Stan's water injector. I don't have the exact drawings here with me at this time, but if you go to Russ's website, I believe it's rwgresearch.org. Go onto the forums there. There are some great pictures um, on Stan's water fuel injector and it has all of the dimensions that you would need to build one um, and on those drawings the gap between the positive nozzle and the outer the inner <coughs> sorry the, the positive nozzle this is just a solid shaft and then the outer chamber is I think point zero one zero and uh, what happens is with that small of a gap it acts as a quenching um, a quenching uh, not a disc but a quenching area and what a quenching area is is that that means that the space um, is too small for ignition to occur so you can have this area full of hydrogen and oxygen gases and it's not going to be able to ignite because the area is too small for it. It's not going to allow it to um, to ignite. So if you combine the two, you have a quenching area, you have an area full of water, you have a positive and a negative pull with the high voltage being applied, what happens? All of this water inside of this injector is instantaneously split into hydrogen and oxygen gases <clears throat> it can't ignite because it's in too small of an area to ignite it creates an enormous amount of pressure which then shoots those gases out the end of this nozzle and is then ignited um, because it's allowed it, it because it can then ignite because it's in an area that it's not suppressed um, so ignition can occur and that's how it works. Um, I really believe that that is definitely how it works. Um, so, high voltage, guys. Um, I'm not sure what kind of high voltage. I don't know the amounts. I don't know whether it's like 100 volts or whether it's 2,000 volts. But according to the videos that I've seen where steam is sprayed into a high voltage arc, it has to be a, a lot, you know, it has to be some, quite a substantial amount of voltage. I think he used about 2,000 volts. Um, off of that microwave transformer, now, which does make sense. The higher the, the voltage, the easier the water molecule is split because the fields are stronger um, and it allows it the molecules to be split easier. Now, it does create more heat, but if it's an instantaneous thing and, and you're only having like split seconds of the electricity um, flowing through and creating an instantaneously um, splitting the, the water molecule it's not going to get hot like you see in like some of those dry cells and wet cells out there of, of um, electrolysis of um, hydrogen created through electrolysis where there's an electrolyte in the solution Stan doesn't lose, use electrolyte he uses pure electricity the hydrogen coming off of Stan's designs is pure hydrogen if you were to ignite the hydrogen and oxygen gases coming off of that it would be a invisible flame you can't see it because of its purity um, so <clears throat> that's just my aha moment guys um, hope it helps you because it definitely uh, definitely is gonna help me I'm gonna take try to see if I can get this machine this injector machine and then I can do all my experimenting and, and show you guys. I also want to send one to Russ um, if uh, I am able to get some made. So it all depends on whether my resources are good enough to do that. Um, I source it out to the same place that's making my gasoline vaporizer for me. So um, another important thing that I wanted to show you guys this is a secondary um, <coughs> switch off coil array that Stan had designed and I think it's important to pay attention to this because what Stan did is he was designing a system that could be retrofitted to any engine 
if it was going to be retrofitted to any engine, you'd have to have different voltage settings so that different amounts of gases can be created. Because um, obviously the larger the engine, the more voltage would be needed to create more hydrogen and oxygen. And so this, this coil right here um, has lower and then higher settings, uh, voltage settings so that you can choose that way you can uh, set it to your vehicle specifications or the engine size specifications so that it would work best with the car that you have or the engine size that you have um, <clears throat> but that's my two cents for the night guys it's like 12 30 apologize for the raspy voice um but i just couldn't sleep i can't i usually can't sleep Barrel because I my mind's just always going 100 miles an hour um, so I just I had that aha moment while I was laying in bed and I, I thought I needed to share it with everybody so that it could give further insight to this technology and you know, you know so that all of our ideas can be shared and that we can work together as a team and accomplish this task of running a car off of water and a lot of other things off of uh, water well, I guess hydrogen and oxygen gases so um, high voltage in a quenched area um, creates gas that's then sprayed out the end of the nozzle and ignited. But anyway, peace out guys. Have a good night. Have a good day. Have a good whatever it is for you. Um, comment, subscribe, all that kind of good stuff. Just share your guys' ideas and information. Um, I like to hear from you guys. It's good to work as a team. So keep it up. See ya.